I'm chatting with Rod Barnes, founder of The Dungeon, which marks 25 years this year. The Dungeon is an iconic music venue in Newcastle, New South Wales, located in the basement of the Uniting Church at Adamstown. Rod is an avid musician dedicated to cultivating a vibrant and diverse music scene in the local community. Tell us, Rod, how The Dungeon started. In 1997, for uh, it was then called the Hamilton Jazz Festival. Uh, normally at a jazz festival, you have one of the churches doing a, a gospel service on yeah. a Sunday morning. And uh, at that stage, Hamilton Fighting Church, as it had become in the 70s, uh, wasn't going to do anything. So we contacted the jazz festival committee and said, um, how about we do one at Adamstown? You know, it's not that far away, uh, which we did. And we had uh, a big band with Francine Bell. And it so happened that that year, it rained for the Jazz Festival. So a lot of things were called off, but we kept ours going, of course, because it was all inside. Yeah and we packed it because there weren't many other things going on. Our minister at that time and I decided to continue it on in some form. So we decided to run a little jazz club once a month. It ended up being on a Thursday night. I think it was the Funky Doodas who were the first ones because we, we didn't have any equipment or anything there, you know, so they brought their own equipment in and keyboard and that went really well. So we got some other groups coming in, all local groups. We developed it to a stage where we thought we need a piano. So we did a fundraising effort to get a grand piano. Uh, we got a baby grand. I remember the group that came up from Sydney and used the piano for the first time was Java Quartet uh, with Greg Coffin on piano. This was just going well because there was nothing else happening like that at the time, especially with more contemporary jazz. And we kept that going for 14 years, 14 or 15. We sort of petered out at the end because I was running out of steam. And it became an iconic jazz venue. Mm, yeah, yeah. And, and you had um, not only local artists, but national artists, and you yeah. had international artists Yes, as well. that's right, yes. Um, sometimes we took it up into the church above, which we could fit more people in. We, our piano tuner would come with his equipment and we'd take the grand piano upstairs. Oh, wow. Uh, put it on a trolley around the car park and oh, then no. establish it up there. But yeah, we, we had um, Jeff Neve from Belgium come out with his group. I think he was there three times. Nice. Oh, the first time he came, we did a an NBN um, session at the Wayne Stewart Piano Factory as oh. it was here at that time. Oh. And Jeff had never heard of Stewart pianos. Yeah. <clears throat> so Wayne was there and introduced him to the pianos and he started playing it. And he thought, this is amazing. <clears throat> Two years later, his agent rang and said, he'd like to come back, yeah, um, but he wants the Stewart <laughs> piano. <laughs> <clears throat> so we contacted Wayne and he said, that's fine, you just got to pay for the cartridge. Yeah. And one of the problems was, of course, the Stuart piano is longer than normal pianos. Yeah. Uh, it just fitted in the doorway. And we had Luca Ciala, who's a, an Italian uh, jazz violinist. He came out and, you know, quite a few others like that. So it was uh, an amazing time. Where does your passion for music come from, Rod? My earliest memories of music, something that I just had to be part of. When I was a child, we had a lot of music in, in the house. My dad played violin, piano, accordion, piano. My mother played piano and my grandparents. So it was, it was sort of a, a part of us, but then I, can remember listening to, to some 78s. One of them that I remember is the Comedy Harmonists, which was a German quartet. I was blown away by that harmony that came through. 
uh, the beauty of the sound. Even on this scratchy old 78, you could still hear it. So I, I got a lot from records then, and of course when TV came along, you got to experience a lot more. And then I heard Benny Goodman and Woody Herman, and I thought, I've got to do that. And I can remember young teenage boys have books under their bed, except I had a music maker book. And on the back of the music maker book was an ad for a clarinet. And I, I just got fascinated with it. So when I got to high school, it was a technical high school. So it wasn't known for music, but we had this music teacher there. In the first year of high school, we had to either join the choir or the recorder group. There's no way I was going to join the choir. So I joined the recorder group and I got this little descant recorder and it really got me. So this teacher got me and a piano student from another school and he would take us out to perform it at concerts and that sort of thing. So, and I mentioned to him my interest in clarinet. He took me into the conservatorium, introduced me to the teacher, organised for me to get a clarinet. So that's where it all started. Over this past 25 years, you've given an enormous number of volunteer hours to your community. Why is the arts and music specifically so important to the community? And what do you get out of it? Music has been part of our experience, part of our psyche, right from the beginning, you know. It's something that we've needed to express. It's been part of our culture, in any culture, doesn't matter where from. I think that is one of the binding forces of our whole society. When we miss out on experiencing that, which is what's happened over the, uh, the pandemic, I think we really lose a lot. I know my friends who are musicians really miss performing it, not connecting with another person in forming your music. Society as a whole loses so much and we individuals lose so much too. I think that's why it's so important we get back to that as soon as possible in whatever form. It's all about connection, isn't it? It is, yes. What do you get out of that? The interaction with the people. Okay. When we're running the dungeon here, we always had an interval, uh, refreshments and that sort of thing. And some of the most interesting times were when people would come up to the window and they just talk to you about the music or sometimes it was about how they felt themselves and what the music was doing for them. I think that's the thing, is the contact with all the people. And I think that's what I love about when we do a big band concert, having all those people there that you can talk to at interval. It's palpable, the, the uh, interaction while you're playing between you and the audience. Rod, music is your passion. You direct and play in the Dungeon Big Band, the Palm Court Orchestra and your Sax Blue Quartet. You nurture and teach other musicians too. Can you share a couple of highlights? Can I tell you about the best time? Please. <laughs> that was my next question. <laughs> All right. When we started jazz at the Dungeon, as it was called then, I was still teaching music at my studio full time and in this space, in the dungeon, there were other groups that used it up to 2 o'clock, it was Thursday afternoons. So I used to come in at 2 o'clock, set up the whole space for that night, race home for 3.30 to teach and teach through to 6 o'clock, grab something to eat and come up and meet the band here and set it all up. It was always pretty fraught, you know, and of course things go wrong and you've got to try and fix those. Pretty wearing. And during the performance, even though I was hearing what was going on with the groups and that sort of thing, I was always making sure that everything was working, getting the, helping get the supper ready and, and all of that sort of thing, and making sure the sound was working properly and that everyone was happy. There was one time when we had the Alice Dispense Trio up from Sydney. Alice is a magnificent composer and pianist. And I found that everything was working fine and I just went and sat down on the side and just wallowed in the music. That is the very best time that comes back to me of listening to the music. There are other times when we were performing, you know, and that's a bit different, you know, because you're working and, 
and getting the music out there. But I went home really happy that night. You experienced it as an audience. Yes, right? that's right. For about five years, we ran jazz comps. Certain people would give prizes for it and that sort of thing. And we'd have, um, you know, maybe four or five groups of young people with their bands and I found that really, really good. We didn't pay them, they were just coming into it for play their very best and maybe get a prize or something like that. An experience. Yeah, that's right. I know some of them have gone on to become professional musicians. It's really important to get them. So what now, Rod? It made me think during this pandemic that we were missing out on music except a lot of musicians put things up on, on YouTube and uh, Facebook for free. So we got back to this need to perform the music, but you're just not getting paid for it. Mm. Unfortunately, I, I know in Newcastle, we've lost a few of the performers that we used to use in our bands. Mm. And it's gonna take a while to build that up again. It is. But it's really important for us to do that. Why? I don't want to lose what we've built up over the years in, in terms of quality of music and commitment to it. I think we'll lose so much if we don't encourage not just younger players, but um, performers in general of that music. We might say then, if we lose all of that that you've built up over the past 25 years, we impoverish the arts experience of the next generation? Yes, I think we do. Now, we do have young musicians coming through and quite often their, their music is very different to what we've, mm. we've done in the past, but we still lose something. What that gets me back to is experiencing those people who'd never heard a style of music before and experiencing it and seeing what they've missed out on. So I, I don't want anyone to miss out on what um, really has inspired me without taking away from the new music that's coming through. Yeah.